Wayne, it is so good to see you. Thank so you, first likewise. off, thank you for having me. Right, thanks for um, having me. In a very lovely studio. I feel like I'm I'm here. This is where it all happens. This is home. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just the basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, the when I met you, it was at a Packers game. So, so I have to start with, are you all in on Jordan Love? Because I was giving you a hard time at that game. <laughs> I'm all in on Jordan Love because for my personal reasons, and also um, for one of the main reasons is because the team, me and the coach, the coach is all in. It's, you know, Wisconsin, Green Bay, they, they all in. And it's, you know, we, when I say we, I do act like I live there. So you hear that if we ask me any other kind of questions and that comes out that way. <laughs> so we, we, we have patience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we show, and we show that we mm -hmm. have patience. And also we, whatever it is about us, we, you know, I, I swear I hate using this word, but if it's the culture, oh, the old yeah, culture word. Yeah, <laughs> if it's the culture, it it works because yeah. the players end up having, and I ain't talking about Jordan Love. The players end up having patience as well. Aaron set before he be, before we knew how amazing he was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless you watched him in school and at Cal, and you knew he was going to be a dog. But other than that, he set. And if you watch the draft, Aaron's draft. Aaron had a problem with being drafted that late. So you, as a fan of football, you kind of like, you want to see what he was going to do the next, when he get in the NFL. And it took like three years yeah, <laughs> for you to wait to see what he's going to do. So mm -hmm. we have patience. And, you know, so and you didn't hear anything about uh, him and, you know, back and forth press stories and all. You didn't hear that, nothing about that till pretty much way later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to your point, Packers fans do a really good job of rallying around yes. their guy. Yeah. Like it means so much to them. And it's really fun going to Lambeau and seeing the houses that are just dedicated right there. Yeah. to Packers football. Yes. Like it's genuinely a lifestyle yeah. there. But as you mentioned patience, I was actually thinking about how much time and patience that we give young quarterbacks and wondered if it is similar to the time and patience that you give to develop young artists. Mm. How much space do you give people to grow into themselves? I do, me myself, and um, what I the way I run mine, and the way I do it, I, my business and my label, and the way I, uh, I guess uh, I I don't want to say teach or whatever, but the way I sculpt an mm. artist and. Um, Patience is, you need patience. And art is, art is, you know what I mean? Art is to the, to the individual liking. You know, there's music that I've never heard that is number one in the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, art is to your liking. So I try to make sure that the artist is, is fully belief, I mean, fully believable in themselves and their art. Yeah. And so therefore you're able to handle not rejection, but even handle unacceptability. You know what I mean? You're able to handle that because mm -hmm. I accept my art regardless and I'm that confident in what I do that I already understand that everyone isn't going to even want to hear it or like it or view it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So once you have that type of confidence in what you're doing, you're going to approach what you're doing different. You're going to approach the art different. And then what you produce is, should be you know, and also it also has to pass by my ears. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know, and that that's a really good point because it's it's about being okay with what you created, mm -hmm. even if other people aren't. Yeah, because then it's fine. Yeah, it's fine because you're sure yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good way to look at it. And I think you know, just generally, there are so many parallels between sport and music. So I really, throughout this conversation, want us to think about the differences and similarities between the two, mm -hmm. because you have such a unique vantage point and you are the greatest in your arena. Thank so you. I, I really would enjoy your perspective on that. Thanks. And to your point about art really being in sort of the eye of the beholder, the thing about sports is there's a clear winner. Whoever has the most points at the end won the game. Mm -hmm. Whatever team wins the championship is the best team. Yes. And it's not the same in music. Yeah. So how do you win in music? Mm. So I have experience, thank God. I've been in this um, like, you know, forever, a trillion years. And so therefore it used to be, I was, I was around when it was competitive. You know, I was around when there was a certain such thing called battle rap, you know, and that was a form of our form of, of rap where I can literally, it was almost 
it was almost comedic. What I mean by that is a comedian can, you know, they roast each other. Yeah. And, it, you know, that means they don't mean nothing by it, you know. Mm -hmm. Battle rap was the same. You know, you got these people, they're standing in a circle and, you know what I mean, Eminem might tear your head off about something that you felt great about yourself in the mirror before you got there, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, so... And then, yeah. you know, and then they come right back in and do the same. And so mm -hmm. that was a that was an art form. You know what I mean? They had people that, that to this day there's there's battle raps that went down that are that's not and they they aren't filmed, they aren't recorded, and they're let there's legends because of their their le the legends come out of that because of, we don't have that no more. Mm -hmm. So so I was around during that. And then when I came out, that was kind of gone. But it was still a competition. The competition, mm -hmm. yeah, the competition was everyone clicked up. So if you had a, you know, everyone had a click. So that let you, that was right there. That, that was the perfect example of competition. Yeah, that's my team. That's my team. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get, everybody had to change. You, get, you know what I mean? Everybody, we just represents my team. Well, you know, now, no. Now you're going, I need 30 chains. I don't even care what it represents. And I just need one that say my name. I need one that say something cool, whatever the new mm -hmm. thing is to say. I need one that say that. Oh, my nickname. I need one to say, you know, <laughs> yeah. also, oh, what's popping, right? Oh, Gucci just put that out. I need that one, you know. So mm -hmm. that's a difference. Yeah. A big difference. So my, I remember when I was coming out and I first came out, the competition was, was what you, what you, what your number's doing. That was the competition. So I remember being young and being, in the cash money offices, and first thing I always ran to was, I'm, and this is this is when I was like, you know, number one in the country. Yeah. And first thing I ran to was the Billboard magazine, magazine people, not this is before you know, what I mean? magazine. Because that Just was your see, proof. Yeah, to see where I'm at, if I got a square, you know, what I mean, by my name, or if I have a damn triangle, whatever I got, a circle, whatever I got mm -hmm. by my name. Thank God I got a diamond. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, like just to see what I got by my name, and see who under my name, and see who over my name, you mm -hmm. know. And so that was a thing. You know, like that was a, and even cash when we had our own, our own competition amongst numbers selling album sales within our within the team, you know, like Juvenile came out here. I think he like went platinum in his first week. That was the bar. Mm -hmm. That was the bar. Okay, you got to go platinum your first week. I think I came out my, um, with my first solo album, and I went gold first week. And you know, to I was like, okay, I ain't Juvie, so I wasn't expecting to do a Juvie dude. Mm -hmm. But then I went platinum like the next uh, that whole that month. Yeah. And so it was, I mean, so we now, man, you can just make a little snap your fingers dance, and that might sell more than Lil Wayne ever. I mean, on my whole album. Yeah. You know, so it's a, I don't even know what the, how they compete now. Yeah. I don't even know what's the competition because me, I'm still running around calling myself the best rapper alive and living up to it. Yep. So to be the best at something, you have to have someone that's not the best. You have to be going against something that's not the best. Yeah. And that's the whole game. Absolutely. And I mean, it, <laughs> it, it sounds like too, it's like, do you do you miss those days of the competition? Um, I would say, I would say no. No, because if I were to miss it, that means I'm holding on to it and I don't know how to adapt. And, and I would be, also I would be lying to say if I miss it because I'm so much forward trying to you know move I saw I'm so into moving forward and adapt I mean adapting that I, I really forgot them to you asked if I forgot those days yeah. you asked about them. <laughs> yeah. yeah well then so as you think about it in the vein of like you know rap still in some ways feeling competitive what does practice look like to you what is it that you do to be better every single day I do what we I do what I do it with an artist probably carve out a time in their year to earn the schedule, earn the day to do. I live that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a, I carve out a time to do regular life, that type of stuff, like breathe, stuff like that. You know, like I have kids that carve out a time to remember you have kids mm -hmm. and oh, what do you do with kids? You know, <laughs> and that type of thing. Yeah, for real. Yeah. You know, like that's because I live this. I live, you know, I, I live in here. I came here and I'm late here because I was at my house in my own studio working on something else. Mm -hmm. so I lived this. You know, like in my studio is in my guest house. My house is 45 times bigger than my guest house. Every time somebody come over there, they're like, that's your house? 
I'm like, yeah. They be like, why we ain't in there? I'm like, oh, we ain't here. And they could look around and just see by all the stuff that's in there, just the stuff that everyday life stuff that you live in here. Mm-hmm. And if I take them upstairs, they can see how clean upstairs look like. I'm look like I'm trying to sell the house. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. For so, sure. And they can see that like you don't live in here. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's what I guess practice is to me. That's just doing it. I do it every day. Yeah. I need a reason not to do it, not a reason to do. It. You know, as I've watched a lot of your interviews and was reading a lot of your articles, you talk a lot about, you know, this obsession that you have with this. Mm -hmm. And that shows in what you put out, that it is something that means something to you, that it is a lifestyle. But what separates people that are obsessed with this and the people that love it? Because those aren't the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I still believe that the people that love it, they're they're, they're human. And so they know how to carve out time for the things that's actually important to them. Mm. You know what I mean? And so they, because you can love a billion things. You know, so they just, uh, like you said, they can love this, but they may also love their kids and they may also love their car. They may also love their look. So you may love what you just did, the song, the album, and then you may love the attention you got from it and forget how to do another album. Me, I'm obsessed with this. So I actually don't even know about the attention. You know, I got to be reminded. I got to even be told, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's why I think people see the the organic response or the, like, you know, he really he really loves us. You know, he really respects the anyone that respects him mm-hmm. and respects what he does because he loves what he does so damn much. He's obsessed with it. That if you have any inkling of a respect for it, a, like for it or don't tell me you love it, then I can't do nothing. He, he as in me, I honor you. Mm. Yeah, this is what I do it for. You are what I do it for. I don't do it for myself because if I'd done it for myself, then I'd have been stopped. Yeah. Yeah, because I got enough. I just told you how big the house is. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, I'm good. Myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I was, um, I was talking to Kevin Durant mm-hmm. about how I was doing this interview. Mm-hmm. And he said that he had a question. Okay. And the question that he wants me to ask you is, are you going to drop a snippet of you all song on the radio show? <laughs> See, I see why would KD do that? Because <laughs> see, I'm a you know I'm a true. I'm, you already know you know just I'm a trap. That was a, that was on the rap. That was on the low. I was not put, you only see <laughs> KD. You messed up. Now, now that you've done that, I just want you to know you messed up. The out and that song was being considered to be on Carter Six, and I said you just said something. It's not going on. <laughs> now that you've ruined it. <laughs> nah, but, uh, no, I'm not playing a snippet because I just told the people how important the song is, the verse is. It yeah. actually was supposed to go on uh, the Kylie Girl, Welcome to Kylie Girl album with me and 2 Chains yeah, that two just chains, came yeah. out. But I, 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 you know, I saved it. I want it for something else. Yeah. You know, he kind of okay. goes crazy on there. So. Yeah, well, when I asked about it, him about it, he said uh, to ask you. Oh, so give me, crazy. tell me about it. What is he like as, a, as an artist in the studio? Uh, I wasn't in the studio with him. He sent it. Oh, that's another thing these days. Totally different. Yeah. You know, back then you had to actually meet up with the person, you know, and go yeah. to the studio, deal with their entourage and your entourage too. You yeah. know, all that, all that had to go. And so, but now, you know, it's a text. Yeah. You know, text the song. I text it back to you when I finish, you know, right. literally. And he did. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as his style to me, KD's a, a you know, he's um, he's a, what you call it, he's a a jewel, you know, like something of, of the past because he's a backpack rapper. I can imagine KD probably could rap right, you know, I, I can imagine you probably could call a timeout in the game and probably ask him to rap and he probably got a, he got a verse for you. Fire. Yeah, you know me, I need, I, you know, I'm so perfectionist. I need, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know I need yeah. to, wait, hold on, wait, <laughs> I might try to say something about what was going on and all that, you know, nah, yeah. KD probably just got bars. Yeah, mm. and it sounds like it. I love that. Yeah. You know, I was saying to him, like, you know, as he's been getting some into being an A&R, some producing, obviously some actually using his voice. Mm-hmm. I was saying to him, like, you know, Shaq's second phase of his career was TV Shaq that we see. Yeah, yeah. But we know him as that. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool that whenever KD is no longer in the basketball court, if his second phase of his career is music and we know him for mm-hmm. that, I think would be really fire for him because mm-hmm. he does love it, yeah. to your point. Nah, you... To to rap the way he does, you 
you have to put time in it that way. And also, you could you could hear a you can hear a kind of an innate you can kind of hear a where well, it's just in him. It's just him in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Something like you know, almost the way he plays. Yeah. You know that just almost like it's. I don't want to use the word like a days ago, but almost like it's just too easy. Smooth. Yeah. 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 You can hear that in it. You you can hear that. I didn't. I didn't have to do too much thinking for him how good that bar was. Yeah, you know about that. What they say about KD? Easy, yeah, easy, easy money. Easy money, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely. So for you, would you say that rapping is more of like a football mindset or a basketball mindset? Mm. Me, I would say the way I approach yeah. it, I would say is definitely the quarterback mindset. Yeah, yeah I gotta know whatever. I gotta know this, that, 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 mm-hmm. that, that. I might switch up. Might call it audible. Also, I need to play well on the road, meaning features. Yeah, so. And you do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. Okay, so if you think about the sports landscape, what, right? I'll think about the NBA. You have Steph, who's a shooter, mm-hmm. Giannis is dominant, mm-hmm. KD is an unguardable scorer. Mm-hmm. What are you in the rap game? What do you do the best? Me. I do me the best. Um, I would say, I would say that I'm, uh, Like a LeBron, yeah, you know the phenom. I started. I dropped my first solo album when I was fourteen, and that's the same album I'm talking about that went platinum. So the phenom that came out and I, I stuck some that came out, and I've been doing this at this pace of higher ever since. Just mm-hmm. like him, mm-hmm. and you kind of still right now today is kind of like it's so crazy that. You remember Tom Brady was, I remember every year was still, even though he was winning the Super Bowl and all that, it still was, is this the year he going to retire? Is mm-hmm. this the year he going to retire? We don't even say that, because we don't want you to retire, Yeah, bro. we want you to stay forever. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. So I, I kind of look at that as when people ask me, like, when the Carter Six coming out? I'm like, God damn it, that's six of them. And they still want it. And that's how I look at that, you know what I mean, so... I am so happy that you explained it in that way because I had this thought today that I feel like people don't realize that you were one of the first like young stars that actually became a superstar, Mm -hmm. that you have done this your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I think about LeBron, I think about Serena Mm -hmm. and the ways that you all met the expectation but then exceeded the expectation. Mm -hmm. And it is very rare to become the person that you're supposed to become. Mm-hmm. Do you ever sit and think about that? Definitely. Because being that person you was talking about, you, that you in your head, you can only imagine what the what the person you said to be. I don't think we ever, you know, even if we do get to that person, we automatically set another person. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I think that's and that's the reason why I still work the way I work every day. Yeah. yeah. And also from coming from so young back then, I think the longevity thing was the approach, you know, because we knew not to approach it that way, you know, because I was literally the same age and stuff as Lil Bow Wow and Lil Romeo and stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. I had shows and we would have, I would, but I'm not about to get on here and talk about what they talk about. I'm going to talk about what's real to me. Mm-hmm. And that's, it was already adult conversation, Yeah, you know, and so it already made me, that's my long meaning. So therefore, if I'm starting off here, and I'm only 14, I can I got time to make it to an adult. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah 100. percent Start meaning what I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Like you I know? got time to get yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So so going off of that, how did expectations help you, and how did expectations hurt you? Um, obviously helped me it, by just doing what you said earlier by exceeding them. Yeah, by knowing and by knowing that I can, mm-hmm. you know. So, thank you. Not I think you would get that, but that just that's just by confirmation of of anybody by just a crowd or a crowd of two people or whatever. So I got that confirmation already from my grandmother when I was five, six years old, being woken up at ten ten p.m. to come through the Michael Jackson, you know, things like that. You know, sing this song, sing that song, mm-hmm. and there and, and seeing the the satisfaction. Of older, this is my grandmother. This ain't no my mom. This is my grandmother. So they got older people. So it's the satisfaction of them 
and being able to go back to sleep with a smile on, or be able to get a treat or to get a, something out the fridge that, you know, so things like that, that's my confirmation that, okay, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm all right. So that's, I think that right there was all, all the person, like me, the person that I would, I mean, all that I need. So it, it really wasn't nothing else other than, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I'm able to channel back to that at any time. For sure. Yeah. So with, you know, this being so much of your life and it's what you're used to, one thing I was going to ask you was, you know, how much of your identity is tied to you as an artist? But I feel like, at least from what you've said so far, it's like, that is your identity. Oh, no, that is. Who I, yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly who I am. I don't, again, I think that's the person that loves it, that knows how to be someone else, or be themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and turn it. I always say, I always say, um, I was like, I was, when I was younger, and um, baby, baby, my, my, my pops, baby, man, he would be around so many damn artists. So I remember when he would be around, you know, artists that I would see on TV, here on the radio, and, and I would notice that when they go record, when it's time for them to record, I would notice that, all of, you know, we talking the whole time they're in there talking, and when they record, all of a sudden a new voice, you know, they got to get ready there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. I like, it would seem cool, because like, I'm still a kid, and to me, you, you being a superhero. You turn into who you about to be, you know, you about to be this character. Yeah. You know, so it was still kind of cool to me. But at the end of the day, I knew that I couldn't be some character. I was too young. If if I wanted to be the character at that age, then the character was the little guy, the little so, you know, mm -hmm. I couldn't be that around these guys. Nah, they're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. And they're not living that. And so I couldn't, there was no character to be. I was just the the, the little kid that's cool enough to be around these guys. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I made myself and that's what I made the most of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the the youth yeah. or the not having these certain experiences yet yeah. actually helped you find what made you you, mm -hmm. which that's is like a really beautiful way to think about it. To Thank think. you. And so, yeah. like you said, this is me. Yeah, yeah so. for sure. So I also think, you know, I saw, I saw the clip where you discussed the ways that your life has expanded as you got older. That as you got older, there was just everything to rap about. Mm -hmm. How has experience made you a better artist? And why was it depressing to hear otherwise? Well, it's, I mean, just technically experience made me a better better artist by just being able to, just the experience alone, just the longevity alone, being able to hear yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to hear yourself and seeing reactions and seeing reactions to, to this and being able to thank God have the time I'm able to the time I was able to I'm able to have to be able to do different types of music and see the reaction to the different types of music and people be able to come up to you and tell you what the the, the type they like the most from you. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just things like that. That's what a that's what experience come in and I'm still trying to I mean, I guess the the I guess the disappointment to that would be also you it's impossible for you not to judge yourself. Mm. You know? And so it's it's impossible for, for you not to say for, when you see some when you see what they like, you wish they loved. And you see the stuff that they loved. You it's not that you wish they didn't love it. You just, man, I wish that attention was paid to this and then so you try to figure out a way to get it and all that type of stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't wanna say disappointment, but I guess the disappointment would be just you, I guess not meeting your own, your own whatever expectations you set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so that that's super interesting what you just said. I've never heard anybody frame it that way. Can you expand on what you mean by it? It makes it hard not to judge yourself. Yeah. I mean, so just for the simple, you know, for something like you can get, you can get, you can get a, you can have. And you can have an album. I mean, you can have a wave going, mm -hmm. you know, already. To, and you're this person, or you're that, and they know, and they know you for this, or they know you for that, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, you can be, you know, there's a lot of artists that use that use that platform and say, now it's time for me to show them who I am. Mm. And so, therefore, you didn't start off with who you were. So, but it's okay because whatever character you did, it worked. Yeah, you know, it's okay. And I mean, this is this is America. It's okay. You but fake it's a it till you, you fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's okay, but then there's people that's you know that do this thing we do music. Yeah. I want to now. I want to show you what I can, who I am, and what. And you then then you put something out, and they don't even like it. They don't even listen to it, and mm -hmm. that can and so that make you that can make you judge yourself, and that can make you feel like wait, 
I'm not this person. I'm not this this other character or whatever. So yeah. I gotta be that for y'all to like me. I gotta put on the the hat and the the you know what I mean this the umbrella and all that for you to like. Man, I really wish you wanted me to be. So that that goes back to that question you asked me about. You know, like even a question of love and obsession. And when you ask me the question about that, you it seems like I live it. So what I mean by that is, I am this. You're like, I am this, you know, like, and you see a bunch of them now. Mm-hmm. Are you like, I am this, you know? So I don't, what I mean by that is I'm, I still get fussed at by my mom, you know, like, please stop messing up your face. Yeah. You know, like, I'm quite sure they probably don't. There's probably, no, that's just a thing now. You know, like I am, like this stuff means stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm from the era where when you put it on your face, it better mean something. Mm-hmm. And so there's the, it's a huge difference, you know, so that I, I live it. Yeah. And so I guess, and I guess that would, to, I guess to answer that, that's, it's everything else, then it'd be impossible for you not to, you know what I mean? For you not to at least get disappointed at some, at some point, if they don't accept who you actually are, when this is who I am and I'm, Thank God, gratefully accept so much accepted that you look just like me. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> like for for you, maybe this is a character, but for me, yeah, it's me. Yeah. So I'm not putting this on or taking it off. Oh, you trust me. When I get them, when I when I'm with them, when I'm with a lot of artists, yeah. and they still around me, like you know, like wow, like then you do it like like then that you do that like, and I'm looking at them like you don't. Mm. <laughs> you know, like you you don't. Yeah, I thought you, I'm look. I was trying to find, some, figure out, find some new stuff from you, <laughs> right. you know. And you, know, you come around me and Nama, but I, I thank God because it's how hard I work, and I appreciate the love. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, as you're talking about this, I think about so about every season. I talk to Demar Derozan about the mid range. Okay. It's something that we always discuss, okay. and he always tells me that he thinks about what Kobe said to him, which is that you have to stay true to yourself. Mm-hmm. He says he that plays in his mind over and over, and he says. Everyone around me is shooting threes. Why would I feel like I had to shoot threes if I know I can get to one spot yes, that is does. unguardable yes. and unstoppable? And, and, and he does it. <laughs> yes, he's like, why would I feel like I have to change because everybody yeah. else has? Yeah. How have you like resisted that sort of change? Easy. Being obsessed with what I do and myself and my craft so much to where, you know, I always go to this one example. So much to where you do an interview and they ask you, hey, so what do you think about 21 Savage? And your honest answer to that is, wow, there's a new rap group with 21 artists? That must be like the new Wu-Tang. And have 21 pissed off at you because he think <laughs> you did that on purpose. Yeah, but you're like, I really don't know. He was like, yeah. you know what? I went back and saw that. He was like, man, he was serious. He was like, I found out more about him. So yeah. that's how, you know, yeah. like literally being caught up into what I do to I'm never finished. Mm-hmm. So I have no time to know. And then, you know, the only way I really do know what's going on, I got kids. Yeah. You know, I got kids. And, you know, when they come inside and say, you're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, why would you want to do that? And then you look on TV and you see the number one football player or the number one college player, the number one artist doing it. You're like, oh, okay. Uh, it's a wave. Yeah, yeah. it's a thing. It's yeah, a wave. Right, it's cool. a thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really just like having tunnel vision and saying like, yeah. all I can focus on is what I'm doing because yeah. that's the thing that matters to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's all. I mean, this is what we, uh, if you do it, this is what we do. Yeah. If, that's why I try to tell them, like, stop being so amazed that I don't do anything else. Like, uh, you don't, do you care about what these people are listening to where that comes from you? Because if you care, then I don't think you have time for nothing else. Yeah. Just like we talk about these athletes, like we talk about LeBron, that you hear about what he do in the off season for his body and uh, he cares. You know, like that's mm-hmm. why, you know, and it's this thousand year. Have to do that. He right. should already have the, the machine that's named after him for whatever he does. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And nah, if it is named after him, he's still doing it. Totally. You know, so that's what I mean by that. You know, you don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you you either. You, I don't have time to. I'm working on my jumper. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm working, I'm still working on mine. I'm still judging myself when I make a thousand and should have made a thousand and one. Mm-hmm. You know, and so and until I'm stopped, until that's not me, until I don't, I don't have that no more, then beware. Yeah, beware. Mm-hmm. You said before that true artists and pioneers never retire. Mm-hmm. And that made me think about LeBron. Yeah. Because as someone who has achieved greatness, what do you think the term retirement signifies to LeBron? Well, bro, I think what I think um, what Brian is going to you get to a point, obviously, with experience and thank God with success and failure, you get to a point where you understand that okay, retirement means something different. I don't care what it means to whoever's saying it, it means something different to me, you know. And so with that, mean I think LeBron's going to understand that obviously he plays a sport. Mm-hmm. You can't do that forever, but then that's his son. And there's not his son. There's a daughter. Then there's also just his his agency. Then there's also the opportunity to you got you got you got uh, the commissioner or whatever. They're already making jokes about. I'm sorry, I couldn't give him a franchise. That means he's gonna have a franchise. <laughs> you know. So yeah. like, so what I mean by that is, and that's gonna take on something totally. That's gonna require more of him. And you know, if he's gonna he's gonna not if he's gonna approach it the way he approach everything. And that is, he's not retired. Yeah. And he's still doing what and. Obviously, I did the same. You know, I remember I couldn't. I remember I never even saw myself even having a label and no such thing as artists with me. I looked at it like, no, whoever the label is, whoever the artist is, I'm gonna bite your head off. I'm the best. And all of a sudden, Young Money, and all of a sudden, there's a Drake and there's a Nicki and there's Tigers and this thing. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. and I never, never, but it's because I approached it that way. The reason why Young Money became what it was. You know what I mean? Because I can honestly tell you, I was just ready to. Eat your young money up yep. until times change. Yeah. Things change. There are truly so many parallels, it seems like, between you and LeBron. Have you ever <laughs> been able to like have a conversation with him about nah, this? No, nah, I haven't. Um, actually, the funniest thing is I mean, when I was younger, I had a show in like Ohio somewhere, and it was me and I, I want to say Ja Rule. <laughs> 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 me and Ja. We did a bunch of shows together. Um, Back then, and I remember um, Slim, Slim, that's, his, that's Birdman's older brother. He asked me, he's been into, he's very deep into sports. Mm-hmm. So he's like one of them people that like know somebody that's like coming from high school, like way from Timbuktu. And oh, you don't yeah. Even know, like, what? <laughs> he got the scouting report. The, he know the, the, the <laughs> stats and that. You know, like, so because we know him for that, yeah. he was like, you know, Wayne, you got a show in Ohio. I got a, I got a little basketball player through. He's like the best, bro. He's going to be number one. He won't come to your show. You know, and we know you for this, Slim. So, okay, cool, whatever. Yeah. So we get to Ohio, you know, I get told, I oh, remember the dude Slim told you about, he downstairs. I'm like, hey, cool, you could tell him follow us. I remember, I, you know, um, I think Joel Santana or whatever came to my room. So now we talking and we didn't chilled up in the room for oh like two God. and a half hours. And I remember being reminded as I'm walking to my bus, you know, now as I'm going, I mean, that's the little dude in the truck right there in the suburb. I'm like, you talking about the dude, you talking about that, that slim one? Like, he's still down here? You're like, yeah, that's him. I said, let me go. So when I when met him and stuff, he had a broken on, he had an arm and a cast and stuff. And then I remember they, they didn't want nobody to see that. You know, yeah. like, that's, that's, I remember that was something I peaked because I didn't know nothing about that. Mm-hmm. I was like, why they don't want nobody to see it? No, they was like, he that bad, he that cold. They don't want like, I like, I never heard nothing. I was like, he cold. And I ain't never even know you can't show that you hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah no so, one can know. I was like, I don't even know who he is. Yeah. Like, and I remember he had all his whole little crew. And I'm quite sure the crew was probably Rich rich and all just little boys then. Yeah. They all had on little long white T-shirts and jeans like I did. <laughs> and so I remember no that. Way. Remember that like yesterday. Yeah, and I remember and I just remember saying to myself, he must be a real must have been a real fan. Yeah. Been a real fan. I just felt like I'm not missing this moment. Yeah. Or something. But we all had a great time. I love that story. And there's something that's like a little kismet about that. Like that's serendipitous. Like that you guys had this moment yeah. before he became or before I became. Yes. Yeah. I that's like genuinely one of my favorite stories. This that is we've like had. my yeah. baby and them. First thought, you know, he was, I'm, I am, you know, baby, consider me a son. So yeah. that's when he first allowed me to start going on the road by myself. So that's why Slim was like, you know, baby, you got a show in Cleo, Ohio, right? Yeah. They got this little basketball player. He won't, he won't come to your show. He come in, hook that up. Like, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> are some things that are meant to be. Yeah. And then I remember saying, like, wow. Mm-hmm. 
like he became, you know, like because you know now you just you just isn't isn't you just automatically keep up with that person. You just, yeah, you know what I mean, you start. I started seeing him in the you know in the jerk the um the school the green jersey the gold yeah. mm-hmm. like that slime. <laughs> I'm like, where I'm from? I'm like, that's him. What the little head, man? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's him. Like, they talking about he gonna go number one out of high school. Like, nah. I'm like, you talking about he the chosen one? All... <laughs> what? He it on was, Sports Illustrated. That's what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. when I saw that. I'm like, this slam from the show. Yeah. I'm like, y'all don't remember? You know, the homies don't remember. Right, they don't remember uh, anything. Nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta call Slim. Like, Slim, it was LeBron James. Then he's like, yeah. I'm like fire. Bro. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I remember that. Like, I'm like, you like, you remember alone they sat downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to see you. That is like, that's a great story. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. And then of course now he is King James. What? Now that's really wait great. Twenty four hours the medium. Y- yeah. Like and now good luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I wait for them. I was just to go to the games. So yeah. Trust me. For sure. Yeah. You know, there's obviously always so much talk around the NBA right now of okay, what are we gonna do after LeBron retires? Mm-hmm. Who do you feel like should be face of the NBA? Who has it all? I mean, obviously. When I say obviously, and to me, I think the obvious answer is Ja. Because the NBA is entertaining. It's always happening. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is there was always a Michael Jordan, and that was just like, you know, like God. And then, you know, but that was also, you're going to watch these Atlanta Hawk games just to see what um, Dominique go, just to mm-hmm. see if he going to get him one off. I'm going to watch these Portland games to see if Clyde going to get him one. I'm going to even watch these boring-ass jazz games to see what the <laughs> see what the mailman, the yes. giant going to do. And, man, I'm about to watch these Phoenix games to see about Steve. And, and they ain't none of them probably going to make to the playoffs. <laughs> you know, but it was fun. It was fun. So I think that's... That, and also, Jai's, Jai's teams are actually competitive when he's there and when mm-hmm. he's doing his thing. So I think Jai, but uh, you know, after that, you got Zion. Mm-hmm. And of course, I think it'd be blasphemous for me not to say Wimby. Yeah. 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 And he, he looked so good in the beginning. Obviously, the Spurs are losing, yeah. but it was so clear the minute what? he stepped on the court. Nah. He said, yeah, this is different. Yeah. The, the rumors are true. Saw, I'm glad he saw that. I'm <laughs> yeah. glad he saw that. I'm glad he, he started noticing that. Hold on. Yeah. A hand on my back is the defensive stop for me. <laughs> like, yeah. hold on. I got to get that. Hold on. Like, that was the defensive. Yeah. yeah. Yo, hand on his back. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta get right. I eat more Cheerios or something. <laughs> the Wheaties, all this <laughs> well, stuff. Well, I gotta do something. <laughs> do you remember the first game that you sat courtside at? Yeah, I think it was a probably it was probably a New Orleans Hornets game. Okay. Yeah, because you know that was that was the new thing in yeah. town, and you know, and you think you're somebody, and mm-hmm. so you're feeling like I gotta be there, you know, and I gotta be courtside. Yeah. You know? and so then I got season tickets, and they were courtside season tickets, so. It, it definitely was the Hornets. And yeah. it's it's so hard to go back once you sit there one time. You already know. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well. I tried to sweep before. It was like, oh, no, this ain't it. Not the same thing. Nah. I want to be able to hear everything. Yeah. And I want to feel know, like I'm in it. You know, they come holler at you. And I'm, I'm usually with my sons. Yeah. That's cool as hell to my kid. Man. For sure. I love that. Yeah, I didn't we know you knew him. him. Yeah, you know him. Oh, God, I didn't know I know him neither, but you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, I know like Bleach Report had you on the courtside cam and you all had some really nice mm-hmm. moments doing that. Um, okay, so. My son also plays for the Lakers too. Yeah, he oh. looks just like Max Christie. What? <laughs> What? We'll do a side by side. Nah, you got no serious, man. I've t- I've told him that. I told so you know when you, when you tell his mom that, right? She yeah. hit me with like at least three different NBA players. <laughs> they call me like, yo, you saw this dude, your son, they, and Brian being one of them. <laughs> LeBron, yes, LeBron told her like, yo, you ever saw Max Christie? <laughs> CP being one of CP and I'm like, yo, that you ever saw Cam like next to Max, like Max Christie? Okay, that yeah, is funny. Yes. I love. Yes. <laughs> he looked just like and even twins. And and now you know when you admit it, you yeah. know when you you know because somebody could tell you you look like somebody all day, you'd be like, I don't see myself. But you, he's like he had no choice but to say, okay. And he was like. I, I, he does kind of look like me. I was like, no, you look like him, Cam. Yeah. I'm like, no, you know what? Y'all probably are the same age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah, yeah. that's right. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's think about this for a second. Lil Wayne, headline Super Bowl in New Orleans. 
How badly do you want to hear those words? Just as bad as I want to see my name at the top of that list when I was that whatever age it was, and I would bust into the office and get that Billboard magazine. Mm. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Why, what does it signify to you? What does it mean to do that? Uh, I think, you know, just as an artist, you know, because this has nothing to do with, and that's so crazy, that it has nothing to do with the sport as an artist. Yeah. As an artist, this, this is an achievement. As an artist, that has nothing to do with the sport. That's so crazy. It has now come with teams are playing, with cities in, that you perform for the what? Yeah, <laughs> right. Excuse me. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, yeah. oh, man. So that right there is just, it's an achievement. It's a, you know, and thank God I've been on the Grammy stage, you know, and I've, my name has been called and I've won. And nah, I can tell you that. Yeah, and I've performed at mm -hmm. the Grammys and that's an amazing, and the reason why, I, that's probably the next highest feeling I've got, but nah. And I, I know for a fact that when I do the Louisiana Fest, mm -hmm. there, there there's like a, trillion people and, and being in front of my city and seeing that many people is amazing. So that right there is a, a crazy feeling. So to know that a Super Bowl would be, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, and that you? Would be, that would be a little, and I said, by being, going to a Super Bowl before and yeah. watching the halftime show. It's nothing like and it. And wishing, you know, like when you see the artist, you'd be like, I know they could have sung the song that I was featured on. I'm featured on everybody's song. <laughs> yeah, they could have brought, <laughs> yeah, brought me out. You could have brought me out. Could have brought me out. So I mean, you are New Orleans. Like, what does without you know giving anything too crazy away? You know, if when this happens, because we manifest here, what does it look like to you? Like, is it bringing people out? What what makes your halftime show so special? Please do not wear the camera. There. Please do not feel disrespected if you are an artist from New Orleans, an artist tied to me in any kind of way in the music. But no, that's my moment. Mm -hmm. And I earned that moment. So no, I am not bringing no one. I'm talking about, I'm singing. And you shouldn't. I'm singing all the hooks <laughs> that you made, you wrote. I'm singing them. Bobby Valentino, all oh, y'all, I'm singing them. Sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, no. What? Like, this me. <laughs> well, this I might bring out like a New Orleans. Yeah. Jazz great or something like that, you know, like <laughs> something like that, you know. You also I mean, have a lot of just features. Like yeah. you know, maybe if you wanted to sprinkle you a know, little something. If I have a song with Beyonce or something at the time. Please. You know, Beyonce. you know, if I have a song with Beyonce, then of course. Yeah. You know, of course, and that's just that makes no sense not to. Other than that, make Tay Tay can make it, maybe. <laughs> Tay Tay can, but if the Chiefs is actually playing in it, then no, we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you said Taylor Swift can be on my stage rooting for the Chiefs and no, doing it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I mean, I, I heard you say that and I was like, yes, obviously. It is the obvious choice. Because, like, why do you feel like it's important for the halftime show to reflect the people of the city? Because you, there's because there's so many people that's not from the city there, so it's a showcase, mm. you know, and it's something that tourists take back with them, you know, and everybody not coming from a American city, people coming from out the country, yeah. they're gonna remember that, you know, they're gonna remember. Okay, I went to New Orleans to, for the game. I want them to also almost kind of, you know what I mean, forget the, uh, I, I kind of remember the halftime, so I remember the food, I remember the, yep. so you know, it's a showcase. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I believe that I'm, I'm a part of the New Orleans showcase. Yeah, you yeah. absolutely are. I hope so. You know, one of my favorite things about your sports fandom is that you watch women's sports mm -hmm. and you are an avid follower of them. I saw you tweeting about Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you are a big fan of, Caitlin Clark. I mean, so she's so good. It's unreal. <laughs> Yeah. It's just nasty when you watch her. Steph. Yeah. Just Steph. And when you asked me about the face, I, was, I wanted to say Steph. I was like, but you know, he up there in age. Yeah. But yeah. 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 But yeah, I, I saw your tweet about Caitlin Clark. Um, I obviously know that you have a good relationship with Angel Reese and LSU. Yeah. Um, and I love Angel. And I wanted to and talk to you a little bit. Coach. Yes, and Coach Mulkey. Yeah, that's my real connection. Yes, yeah. Coach Mulkey. We yeah. got to shout, shout her out. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Angel Reese because, you know, she has been very vocal about mm -hmm. how she's been dealing with some personal struggles. What advice would you have for Angel just about the adjustment from normal life to all eyes on you, even when it's hard? Mm -hmm. Well, Angel's first of all, Angel is a smart, a smart young lady. Mm -hmm. Very smart. 
And so she takes time to think about the decision she, she's going to make, rather than, rather than your opinion is right or wrong. She takes time to think about them before she makes them. And so Angel has also, you know, Angel has reached out to me before. And not even about this situation, just about advice, period. Yeah. And so with that said, I, you know, at my, at my age, uh, when I was her age, I wasn't reaching out to nobody, especially no one in my position. You know, I was I may I may have been observing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so which is also just a tells of the, the difference in times. Yeah. You know, when you could just be like, you know what, let me hit Lil <laughs> let Wayne. Me reach, up. Let me reach out let me to Lil, Lil Wayne, Wayne real quick. <laughs> yeah. and so, so with that said, though, she's a she's a great human being. And so yeah. I would the advice I would give her though about that, what you asked, is just embrace every part of it. You know, embrace every embrace every single part of it because mm -hmm. if you do then you will know that it will never be always amazing yeah it will never be always good it will probably be majority of tough not bad but it will majority be tough. tough and so you'll you'll enjoy the good and the amazing much more mm -hmm. yeah. I love that and it is true you know when people say like great power comes with great responsibility of it's course. like when you reach a certain level, that is just sort of what's a part of it. Yes. And it kind of becomes on you to learn how to deal to with it. deal with that. And, even though it's hard. And that's when you make a decision. That's when you make a decision because mm -hmm. what they do, you know, when I say they, I mean athletes. Yeah. You know, we got to hear a story about an athlete that didn't didn't start playing when he was, that he or she was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, with that said, they've been, they've been doing this from, you know what I mean, since forever. So when they come to that point where I gotta make a decision to either live this, uh, it's kind of easier for them because it is them. Yeah. You know, so <clears throat> that's why you you know you but you have to be a LeBron though to take it to where you t where you you know, take it to those type of heights to where mm -hmm. this is that's when you make those other decisions like and you still make it that's when you're making that same decision and it's over it's out when all these when the life brings on important important and important and important decisions to make. And that, that that choice you made way when, when you was a kid, I'm, I'm just going to still be this. Mm. It's still outweighing how, how important that, just, that, yeah, that question. Yeah, how you've grown. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's a, that's huge. Yeah. You know, because you, 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 cho you choose yourself over a lot of things, mm. you know. Yeah. And, and that could be viewed from other people as different. You know I mean, you choose yourself over things that's, that other people value or die for. Yeah. You know, and you choose your craft. There's holidays. You know, things like people keep asking me, like, so what you what you doing for like I'm hoping I got a show or something. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I, I heard someone ask uh ask some ask someone um ask Will Byron, like, what you like, where are you gonna be what was like uh right on, here. you're like on TV, mm -hmm. it, entertaining the masses. And yeah. then I was like, that's what like y'all forgot, like that's what we that's what we are. Mm -hmm. Like we don't carve out time for Christmas. That's for the artists that are artists. You know that that uh, whatever the name is, they that, and they got a real name after that. No, my name is Lil Wayne. Yeah, my name is Dwayne. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I'm yeah. not little such and such. It is it. No, mm -hmm. I'm little Wayne. Yeah. We just took the D off because you know my mom, I'm real man. We we went cool too cool with my dad. So yeah. you know, so all this is real. Yeah. So like that's this what real. I mean by that. So you, no. So it's a confirmation of. What you do by you not by me being the way I am, not knowing what they're talking about, not listening to what's going on. So when I do produce with my my product, if you like it, that means you like me, because mm. I can't give you nothing that's like this, or like that, or like this, or like that, or trendy and that. No, I can just take my sh my shot is coming out the pure darkness, and if you shed light on it, then you shedding light on Little Wayne. Mm. Yeah, that's all. And that that probably also feels just really good for you personally. Oh, yeah. And that's longevity. That's why I tell my artists, you know, like we do when these guys do tours, book tours for me, and my artists got to come on the tour, and you know, like five or four artists come for one the first half of the tour, and then the other artists come for the second half. I be like, bro, you see, I got first half and second half of the tour. Like, what's my new album again that yeah. I just put out? <laughs> yeah. Like, we go on stage and sing lollipop, bro. I'm on stage and sing songs that's older than you. Timeless. It, and like, and guess what? I pre sing them motherfuckers, perform them like I put, recorded it last night. Mm -hmm. You know, and so therefore, when you do it that way, it's longevity. Yeah. You know what I mean? I look. I always tell them, I'm like, you know, Vegas coming when I'm when I'm when I'm 
tired and red tired. Yeah. I'm doing Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you got to make sure you have music to come. Like, you can't get in Vegas with, because they got another, they ain't got another lollipop. Yeah. They ain't got another how to love. You they ain't got another little wing. Yeah. One of my favorite clips ever, and I'm just thinking about it as you're talking about this, there's this clip of Denzel Washington on a red carpet, and the, the interviewer says, what are you most proud of in your career? And he says, the career. <laughs> Like I am, I'm proud of the longevity. Like I'm proud mm -hmm. that I'm still here. Like talking yeah. to you. There's, I don't have moments yeah. because my career is so expansive, and yeah. I feel like that really is like the goal. Yeah. And especially for you, it's like your career has so many arms. Even as I was prepping for this, you know, I'm thinking like you have Nicki Minaj and Drake. In so many ways, you are responsible for this generation of music. Mm -hmm. Do you think about it that way? Um, I, I get told that a lot, you know, and, um, and my answer to it is always the same. I always say, I always like, maybe it's a look. Like, because yeah, like, if, like, y'all, like, because I don't sound like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I always sound, I would say the same thing every time. Like, and I'm like, I don't sound like that. Stop telling me. I was like, what you like? Maybe they look like a, like, you know, maybe they look and act and say some risque stuff that I would have, like, and they do give me a lot of love in their music. Mm -hmm. They give me a lot of love, you know, and they, and when I see, see any artists of this era, you know, they should, they show the most utmost respect. And I see that they don't even do it, show them uh, maybe amongst each other. Mm -hmm. But they, it's like, all that's erased, and it's, we just they respect. So I respect all that. But when you say respect, when you say responsible for the, you know, like the maybe the look, and maybe the attitude, and maybe the the again the risk aid, and I don't give, you know, like don't yeah. I don't give her, and I'm gonna make sure this works, and I'm gonna stand on this, and I, that type of thing. Like maybe they get that from me. Other than that, I think if you, as far as the craft, oh no. Oh no! You gotta be a, you. If the crab, then we'll have a world full of great. We have we have a, a, the, the music industry will be a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. What level of just joy and pride do you get when you think about what Drake has become? It's no more, no less than you know. You know, we know how sports. So I would say no more, no less than. DJ Uki Ungalele, when he first got in, when dude got hurt, and the uh, not the, the commentator scrambling and like this is DJ uh, Uga, uh. and then as he he start killing it, and now all of a sudden they got to show a shot of his dad in the crowd, and they got to dig up his dad's history. You know, his dad used to be a, a security for the number one artist, the Chris Browns and Little Wayne's, and, and when they show his dad and they looked at his dad, you know, I, mean, I know Big V. I know it's obviously it's my security, and it's all, that that is that feeling of seeing hmm, here it come, mm. here it come, and then then when I say here it come, it's like knowing that oh I already knew this, mm. y'all just same feeling that Mr. Devito is getting, yeah, the same feeling that Mr. that the Purdies get when they that when they had to get watching what he's doing, it's the same feeling just like. It's amazing, but it's also in there because I knew what it was and I knew what it. And, but to me, it's more. I get more pride. I was more. I get. I was more happier for what, what it did for to him, how he felt about it, mm -hmm. how he feels about it. You know what I mean? Like you know, like it's also all, awesome how everybody feels about him. But to see, you know, something. It's like you know, like you a coach and you telling them, no, I need you to. Need you to three stop and let three three stop drop. I mean three stop and let go of the ball. Right? I need you to make a decision. And, and you know that 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 kid being great already, and they never made that decision. Looking at you like, why do I have to start making it now? Mm -hmm. And the, the times you make a decision, he wins a, and you that's wins it all. Yeah, and they come run up to you and and let you and remind you. I made the, I did the three stop. Yeah, yeah. So that's this exact same feeling. And yeah. It's multiplied. That feeling is multiplied when it's Nikki. Yeah. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Just like a a pride. And yeah, also like I, I knew. I discovered I knew. Nikki different. Yeah, differently. I, yeah. I, Nikki, I found Nikki. Nikki was I found her. Yeah. 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 I love that. Okay, a few more for you. I only have about five minutes, but 
I was actually telling Drake about this quote. It was when I was watching Mad Men and it said, even though success is a reality, its effects are temporary. Mm -hmm. You still get hungry, mm -hmm. even though you've eaten. Mm -hmm. Whoever do you said think that was not lying? Yeah. <laughs> do you think you will ever feel full? Uh, no. I think if I do, that'll be the day I stop. Yeah. So that's why when you were saying, that's why I was, I was, I was, I want to point. I mean, that's why I would point out the fact that I, I used the Grammys, the grant, like performing at the Grammys or winning the Grammy. I use that as the as the bar, as under the bar, <laughs> you know, yeah. like there's some people that are like, what else I gotta do? Yeah, you know, like well, I didn't want a Grammy, I've been nominated for a Grammy. What, like I ain't got nothing. Else. There's got people. There's some, you know, and I and I respect you because that is the pinnacle of what of what we do. But then there's your own pinnacle, mm -hmm. and I'm quite sure if I perform at the Super Bowl, even if I'm just featured there, that even if if I'm there, it's amazing for that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. for that night. Now, what's next? You know, like, hey, Roger, I heard you're taking, the, heard you're taking this game over international. You know what I mean? I would love to be thought about, mm -hmm. you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. When you were on The Pivot, you were talking about this because you were about to get an award. And you said the awards I get are way too late mm -hmm. because I've been going hard and I'm not going to disrespect how great I am. Do you feel like you have gotten all of the flowers that you so rightfully deserve from this industry? Definitely, because I told you when it's real like this, and when you do it the way I do it, the just giving me the dirt to grow flowers is just that's that's enough. Yeah. So I told you, so every every single petal matters. Yeah, yes. amazing. Okay, last one for you. I want to know your like, what is your elite? highlight film? Like if somebody said, this is Lil Wayne, what song would you want them to play? Ooh, a Millie. A Millie. Yeah. 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 That was him. Yeah. Yeah. And only, only because Carter Six ain't dropped yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if it was something that was going to be classic or whatever like that, that if I had, I mean, that I have to answer this question, it'd be a Millie. It'd be a Millie. Yeah, but the answer is always the song that I haven't recorded yet. Yeah. yeah. So there's always something else to chase. Yeah. There's always something else yeah. to do. Yeah. I love that. Well, I have to say, I mean, you can ask a few people in this room. When I was asked who I wanted to come on my show, I mean, years ago, I said Lil Wayne. Thank like you. I, we were talking about this on the way here. You were like just the soundtrack of so much of my life. <laughs> and so to be able to be here and talk to you and just like pick your brain and mm -hmm. see your perspective on different things has genuinely been a joy. So I thank mean you. it from the bottom of my heart when I say thank you for your time yeah, and for you. agreeing to do this. And thank you for letting me know that. Yeah, I appreciate of course. That. Yeah. Absolutely. You are amazing. Thank, thank you. Likewise. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.